Welcome to the Emerging Temple broadcast. I am Michael Obeyer. I will be your guide for the rest of this broadcast. At Emerging Temple, we seek to analyze current events within the context of God's plan for mankind, in which he intends, at the end of time, to raise up a people who will rule with him. Before I go any further, I want to encourage you to like our page, to subscribe to our channel, and if there is a notification bell icon, I would like you to hit that bell so you can be notified anytime we upload new videos. I want to encourage you to like this page so that we can develop the number of likes that we have so that we can come up in the rankings because we have a message that is critical for this hour and this time. So thank you so much for those of you who are already doing so. If you'd like to support our ministry, you can visit our website at templeoftruth.us. That's www.templeoftruth.us. Or you can go to patreon.com and look for our handle, Emerging Temple. I listened to I listened to a message this week that you know that really touched me. Um, and it was uh, something about storing up mercy for your family. And the preacher went on to, you know, talk about how our actions today, how the life we live today will be ripped by our fourth up to our fourth generation. And how um, he gave an example in the Bible is with David. And he said how even though Solomon went against God and Solomon's son, uh, Jerob, is it Jeroboam or Jeroboam? I don't remember now. Also went against Rehoboam. God. Rehoboam. Rehoboam, yes. And it went against God. And But God said, because of my servant, David, I will spare you. And he carried on keeping to that promise, even more than 400 years after David. And then he talked about how King Saul and Jonathan, gave also an example about King Saul and Jonathan, how despite the way King Saul was living his life, his son, Jonathan, you know, was following God and even going against his father just to save the life of David. And after Jonathan had been killed along with his father, years later, how um, jo um, Jonathan's son was remembered and that it was God paying Jonathan for the mercies that he stored in his lifetime. And just, um, and he gave so many other examples that, you know, it, it, it really touched me because I just started to think back at my grandmother, my mother, my family and how sometimes, you know, the life we see today and what we're reaping today, you know, when we're reaping some rewards in our lives, so we don't realize that that is, you know, the investments that our ancestors or, you know, the investment they made before God and those mercies that they have stored up, and that's what we're reaping today. And so how we have to store up the same mercies for future generations, the, the life we live today, the work we do for God today, how God will pay our future generations for that work. So I, I really, I really thought to share that because I, when I listened to that, that really, that really was a was a message that I thought I thought about. All right, thanks, Sister Billy. Mm. Does someone else have something 
um, a spiritual experience or anything you felt was spiritual and uh, you want to share? If not, just say no. No. I had a couple of exper spiritual experiences, but nothing I want to share. <laughs> All right. What about Mom Logan? Okay. Mom is right. muted out. I don't know if she didn't realize she was muted, but mom, you're muted. No, 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 that's fine. She does. She knows. She and I spoke. All right. Okay. Um, what about the scripture? Is there some scripture you you want us to talk about? Maybe you've studied anybody and you have questions about? Well, I uh, am I unmuted now? Yes, yes. mom, you're unmuted uh, now. Uh, uh, in my Bible reading this week, I was reading about, uh, I think it was Naomi who lost her husband, lost her sons, and uh, decided to go back home. And when she went back home, it was a time of harvest and reaping. And how that relates to how we live today, sometimes when we are, are, are down and feel like we're totally despair, we, we don't reach back to the promises of God. And she and the one daughter that followed her uh, went to a better place by returning home. And in my past, uh, I've always kept the ties to my family, especially my spiritual God-loving family tight because they could hear that in my voice. And they would say, we don't need the details. We've already prayed for you. Everything's gonna be all right. And, and that was just really super for me this week. Amen. Uh, and the daughter-in-law was uh, Ruth. I don't think I caught your comment. No, I said her daughter-in-law was Ruth. Yes, Ruth. The, the great, 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 great grandmother of Jesus. It was really, it was really a, a good scripture right on time to read. Okay. Why don't we do a little Bible study then? Amen. 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 Let's do. Let's do. Let's look at the book of Ephesians. Ephesians. Uh, let's let's study chapter one because it has it has some doctrine that um, it has some doctrine that I think is really good, you know, for us to you know to meditate on and kind of um, be comfortable with. So um, as usual, I'm gonna need help somebody reading. So um, we could, we're gonna read the whole chapter. So if we could have, maybe split it in two, have yeah. someone read from um, verse one to 11 and somebody else will read from verse 12 to the end. Which chapter of Ephesians? Chapter one. Okay, that's what I thought you said. Yeah. So somebody read verse one to 10 and the other person read from verse 11 to the end. I'll read, mom will read. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints, which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God, our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places 
in Christ. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation, excuse me, foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded to want us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath proposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. That's the end of verse 10. Okay, so before we go to verse 11, let's talk a little bit about verses one to 10. If you notice, if you notice, he's, he starts off by saying he's greeting us, but he says something, he, he says something about us. And that thing he says is that we were chosen from before the foundation of the world. Did, yes. What verse was that? Four. Four. Verse four. Okay. Yes, four. Now, God said, I believe to Jeremiah or Ezekiel, one of those two, he said, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Yes. Amen? Amen. Okay. Amen. Then in the book of Hebrews, Paul said, when Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek, that Levi, his great-grandson, was in Abraham paying tithes to Melchizedek also. Are you with me? Yes. Now, remember that Abele just said she listened to a message this week that really blessed her, where the pastor talked about receiving blessings down to the third and the fourth generation and receiving curses down to the third and fourth generation. Amen? Amen. Yeah, but it should have been 10th generation blessings, fourth generation curses. Okay, cool, cool. Thank you. So we see here Paul saying, we were chosen from before the foundation of the world. Now, let's analyze that very, very briefly because it's very important to note certain things. What Paul was referring to there was not our salvation of being saved, okay? Why? If it was referring to our salvation, it would mean that God chose some of us to be saved and others not to be saved. Are we? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, do, you, yes. do, do I? Um, okay. Okay. If somebody wants to ask a question, let's. Let, that's fine. Anybody have a question about that? No. Okay. So we, he must be referring to something else. He cannot be referring to our salvation. God couldn't have chosen you to be saved and then chosen somebody else to be destroyed. But God could have chosen you to have entered into something in Christ and other people were not given that same opportunity. Now, I'll give you a scripture for that. Jesus' disciples came to him and said, Master, why do you speak to us plainly, but to them you speak in parables? What was his answer? What was his response? Because, because they were too immature to that they were too immature to hear the stories that he was telling to the apostles. 
if they were grown enough to, to understand. No, but Jesus that. gave a response. Jesus said, because they <laughs> asked him that question. They said, Master, why do you speak to us plainly, but to the others you speak in parables? And Jesus had a response. Can anybody remember what that response was? Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. There you go. Matthew 13, oh. 10 to 11. Thank you. Matthew 13, 10 to 11. So out of the master's mouth, you hear him saying that they have been given the opportunity to know the mysteries. Notice the word mystery, make something deeper. Mysteries of the kingdom, but to the others, it hasn't been given. But not long after that, he comes and tells us to go and preach the gospel to every creature. So the mystery of the kingdom must be something deeper than the gospel of salvation. Amen? Yes. Amen. God didn't choose, God made the gospel of salvation available to every human being. But the mystery of the kingdom, which Paul is elucidating now in Ephesians chapter 1, is only open to those who were predestinated to that knowledge by God. You and I are part of that elite group of people that God chose before the world began to have this understanding. Okay, so if you don't mind reading um, chapter one again, but um, we just take it, say, from verse four, okay, from verse three uh, to six. You want mom to do that? Sure. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. How far? Six. Okay. Six. Having, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, and he hath made us accepted in the beloved. End of six. Thank you. Thank you. So we see that word predestinated, correct? Yes. yes. That means it's like a GPS. You predestinate where you want to go to. So God already predestined you to get to a particular location, but he has not predestined everybody else. If everybody was predestined to be at that location, he wouldn't tell us we were predestined. It will just be everybody's destination. Some of us, have been predestinated to that thing. Now, when you go back to the book of Romans chapter eight, you'll read about this in, in more, more clarity where he talks about predestination. Unfortunately, people who don't know and understand this read that and believe that God has predestinated some people to be saved and others to be destroyed. But that is not what he's referring to. Amen? God Amen. Amen. desires and has made a way for everybody to be saved. But he has set a, a, a place of glory for just a few. Those few are referred to by Jesus as the elect. You've heard Jesus talk about the elect before. He said, there will be great deception on the earth at the end of time. So great that if it were possible, even the elect will be deceived. Do you remember that, everybody? Yes. Yes, I remember. Good. Now, he, he didn't say even the Christians would be deceived. Of course we could be deceived. I mean, there's lots of Christians who just don't know their left from their right. 
So he can't mean that. He means there's a specific group of people who have a certain kind of intuition that is unique to them. These people are a different breed, a different, if I might use the term race, they're a different race of human beings, but they come from all races on the earth, black, white, Asian, native, whatever. But these people are Christians, but they're different from the other Christians. Now, flow with me for a second. Let's go on now to chapter, to chapter continue. Um, somebody else read from verse 11 <laughs> to the end. Amen. 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 In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. In stop. Whom you stop. I'm sorry I had to stop you. This was so important, I couldn't let it go. Who was it that first trusted in Christ, according to what you just read? Us. Us. It, if it's us, it wouldn't have said the next verse. It was Jesus, wasn't it? Oh, sorry, God. Thank you. The first person to trust in Christ was God. God must trust in Christ to do the things he does. That is why it says, all things were made by him and without him, nothing was made that was made. Are you with me? Okay, yes. read the very next verse, Dr. K. In whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of Stop. your salvation. Thank you. In whom you also, that means you were not the person he was speaking about just now in the previous verse. Do you see it? Yes. He was talking about somebody else who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted after you heard the gospel. Who is that someone else who first believed in Christ? Well, I think if we keep reading, it answers the question. Okay, go ahead then. Go ahead. In whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the, until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Stop. Where Another important place we can't move on unless we talk about it. He says, we have received the spirit, which is the earnest. Anyone who has bought a home in America, on your loan document or mortgage document, you will see a term there called an earnest, an earnest down payment. Have you noticed that before? Yes. yes. So an earnest is like a down payment. Is that the full amount? No. No. So what is Paul referring to as the earnest here? What did he call the earnest? What did he refer to as the earnest here? The Holy Spirit of promise. Thank the, the you. Seal, the seal of the Holy Spirit of promise. So the Holy Spirit that you and I have is not even the totality of what God has for you and I. Do you see that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that something? I mean, if you've ever been moved by the spirit of God and to think that, whoa, that's just a down payment. It's not the full thing. The full thing is still coming. Keep going. Sorry. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So it was here in verse 17 
that that thought that started up at verse 11 ends and tells us that he's talking about God. Okay, go ahead. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And Stop. what is... Let's look at that phrase as well. His inheritance in the saints. Now, I know everybody here has read this a million times, but have you ever thought about that phrase, that statement? God has an inheritance in you and I. That means there is an investment in your life and God is waiting for the, the investment to mature. So God has a stake in your well-being. He has an investment in you. Things cannot just happen to you because when things happen to you, they're happening to God because you are his investment and he's waiting for his inheritance. You know, everybody here knows what an inheritance is, but now we're discovering that God himself is waiting for an inheritance and that inheritance is in you. Okay? Amen. All right, Amen. keep going. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe? according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come and have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Amen. So finally, he's telling you that the power that raised Jesus from the dead is now working in you so that God might be all that is in you at the end. Amen. 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 Now, Amen. so if the only thing that is in you at a point in time occurs and you are looking at another human being, please tell me what they will be looking at when they see you. God. There you go. That means at by the time God is done with you and I, and all that is in you is God, when anybody who never made it to that place sees you, they will actually believe they're seeing God. That is why you are a Christian. That is why you have been granted the grace to understand and to believe what we've been saying concerning his word. Not every Christian is going to hear this and believe it. Not because they're bad people, but simply because they were not what? Given. Chosen. Chosen. That's, what, that's what Jesus said. Mm. That's what Jesus said. It's not, it has nothing to do with somebody not liking you or somebody not being smart. It's nothing to do with that. Mm. You are here tonight hearing this and understanding it because you were chosen by God from before the world began to understand and to know this. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, just to buttress, I need to use another scripture to kind of buttress what we just said. Um, where's the scripture that says God, that God might be all in all. Hang on. Thanks. I think that might be Second Corinthians. I'm not sure. But if you look, search for God might be all in all, it'll pop up. It 
It's uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 28. Okay, let's take a look at that, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 28. Amen. 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 And, Amen. When all, and when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also be subject, subject unto him, that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Okay, can you read that again, please? And yes. so we analyze it, sorry. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Okay, now when you read that, it seems to suggest that Jesus is not fully submitted to God. Is that correct? No. So which son is it that is not fully subject to God right now? Us, the elect. Okay, who said us? I said us. Okay, I want to hear another voice. That's why I was, I was wondering if it was a different person. That's, you're right, Dr. K, but I want to hear from other people. Let's take a look at that scripture. It says, when the son himself is subjected fully to God. Now, come on. Is anybody here actually believing that Jesus is not fully subjected to God right now? Jesus told us, I can do nothing of myself. Only what I see the Father do, do I do. And the Bible says he was obedient, even the obedience of the cross. That means he submitted to God in all totality. But there is another son that at this moment is not fully submitted to God. And that's you. Remember last week? We read where it said he put the captain of their, of, their, of their salvation, made him perfect through sufferings, that he might bring many sons to glory. You all remember that? We studied that last week, Abele? Yes. 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 I was in Hebrews, remember? Yes. Pastor Tabu read that for us. Yeah. We saw that Jesus was the captain of his brethren and that we are his brethren. So we are a part of that son, S-O-N, that as at this moment is not fully submitted to God. We still... You blanked out. Disconnect. Do our own things every now and then, don't we? Amen. We, yeah. we missed you everything we said. <laughs> okay. Okay. I said we are that son. That is not fully submitted to God. Look. Hello. Yeah, we're Hello. here. Okay. I said we are that son that is not fully submitted to God. It's us. When that occurs, okay, look, look, sorry, read the verse, Dr. K, read the verse before the verse you just read. Okay. Verse we, do, we all know that Jesus has, has conquered death. So this son is still trying to overcome death. Go ahead, read it. Amen. For Amen. he hath put all things under his feet. But when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. Continue. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Okay. So God has put all things under the sun, S-O-N, 
Mm -hmm. But when the son himself has come fully under God, then shall God be all in all. Remember, we saw that phrase all in all earlier in Ephesians. That's why we're here. Yes. Okay. okay. The, the part about the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. I yes. Um, if you'll humor me, I think we should start at verse 22 and read. Okay, there. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Chapter yeah. we in Pardon me? First, first Corinthians 15. Verse 22 yeah. through 28. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he put all, for he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Amen. Okay. You know that verse where it says something about accepted? Yes. Okay. I love Sister Liz to read that verse and try her best to tell us what she understands that verse is saying. The book. Okay. In what, what verse is that? First yes, 27. First 15. Verse 27. 27. Yes. Is my book is a little bit different. Scripture reads that God has placed all things under his feet. But when it stays, but when it says that everything has been made subject, it is clear that he has made everything subject in Christ is excluded. Sorry, I can't hear. Oh, it says, um, but when it says that everything has been made subject, it is clear that he has made everything subject to Christ is excluded. I don't understand that. No, I, I don't understand that. Okay, sorry. Let's read that. Read, if you don't mind, read it one more time. So I can understand. I can understand it. Scripture reads that God, and then in quotes says, has placed all things under his feet. But when it says that everything has been made subject, it is clear that he has made everything subject to Christ is included. Oh, that he who, oh, I'm sorry. It is made clear that he who has made everything subject to Christ is excluded. So Very good. Now, tell me what you understand Christ, that to mean. I think that means that um, Christ, Christ has now put all these things together and all these things have come under his jurisdiction but um, he, he's careful to say that it was God is not under him God is still because it says he who has made everything yes. subject to Christ excluded. so I think it's saying God is not under Christ God is still God there you go very good very good. Now, there's only one slight problem with your translation. The people that chose, you understood it. Very good. You understood what they said. But notice your translation said Christ. But the oracle didn't say Christ. It said son. Because the only son that they know is who? Christ. Right. They don't know you and I to be sons of God. You see Amen. that? Okay. Amen. Good. So Christ, God put everything under the sun, under Christ. Yes. Correct. But you are a part of the body of who? Christ. Christ. 
Now, everything submits to Christ and Christ submits to God 100%. But does everything submit to you and I 100%? No. 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 If it, did, if, they, if it did, every month you wanted money to pay your rent, you just click your finger and the rent would come. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> but are we ourselves 100% subject to Christ or to God? Yes. No, yes. obviously not. I want everybody should know the answer of head. Now, what are we trying to do here? We're trying to get an understanding of what all in all means. Because at that end of that scripture, it says that God might be all in all, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Wait, wait, what verse is it that says God might be all in all? 28. Okay, I see a finger raised. I see a, I see a, I see a hand raised. Somebody had a question. That's the belly. Okay. Go ahead. No, I was just going to ask someone, this, this um, particular verse, kind of like sometimes it causes confusion about Christ, God, Son of God being God himself, and then Son of God being subject to God also. So can you can you clarify that, that confusion? Because it, sometimes it seems to be... Okay, to oh, okay. okay, fine. Let's keep that, hold on to that question. Because what I'm trying to get across to us now is the, the meaning of all in all. We started seeing that mm -hmm. phrase in Ephesians. And we're, we're, we're talking like, wait. Mm -hmm. It says here that at some point, the son will be fully submissive, submissive to God. And we're saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Jesus has already been fully submitted to God to the degree that God, that he came and told us that God has given him all power in heaven and on earth. And he sits in his father's throne. And if we overcome, we will sit in his throne the way he overcame and he sat in his father's throne. So as far as Jesus and God is concerned, the story is closed, case closed. Jesus is not struggling on whether to do the will of God or not. It's you and I. So the son, S-O-N, that is being referred to in 1 Corinthians is you and I. Amen? Amen. And, Amen. and what Sister Liz read for us was this part where it says, God put everything under the son, but God himself is not under the son. Okay. That's what Liz read, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, please turn backwards to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. Anybody can read. Amen. 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 Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unrighteous and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world will be judged by you, are you not unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Do you not know that? Are you unworthy? Are you, sorry, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more things. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. That, how much more. Go ahead. Things, go ahead. things that pertain to this life. If then you have judgments you. concerning things pertaining to this life, do you appoint those who are least esteemed by the church to judge? I well, say let's stop there. Let's stop. Let's stop there. We got what we wanted. Let's mm -hmm. stop there.
We got what we wanted. We got what we wanted. What we wanted was where it says, you are going to judge angels. Yeah. Verse three. Okay. You are going to judge angels. Now for you to judge an angel, you definitely need to have a much better nature than what you have today, correct? Correct. There is a process to get to that place where you're able to be as Christ is. For now, you're, we're not in that, okay? I wanna share with us one last scripture to buttress what I'm saying, amen? Amen, amen. yes. So can somebody please find where it says, where it says, it's the book of Revelation, where Jesus says, you shall no longer go in and out. It's a book of Revelation. Oh, Re Revelation chapter three, verse 12. Okay, good. Amen. 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 Are you going to read, Mom, or who's going to read yes, that? I will. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of God, of my God and he shall go no more out. And I write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. Thank you. So notice Jesus says, you will no longer go out, right? Right. Yes. That means at one time you used to go out. Well, when you go out, you're going out of the presence of who? God. 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 So that describes where you and I are right now. He said, but if you overcome, he will make you a pillar in his house and you will no longer go out. Glory to God. You will be perpetually, you will be per perpetually in his presence. Amen? Amen. And if you're a pillar, it means you are one of the things that holds up the temple. The temple is the body of Christ. Okay? Okay. Now, these things we have spoken about, I really believe today's lesson requires us to go back and play this tape. We need to go back and replay this recording with our Bible because I can see that it's, it's like, look, you've got to get this. It's not optional, okay? It's like trying to get directions. You're trying to go someplace and you need to get directions. And what we're going through today, these are the directions of how to get to your destination. That predestination that you read about in Ephesians 1, where you are predestined to get to, you need to know the way. And what we're studying is the way. So remember, we read where it says, when death is overcome, then the son shall be subject to God. And we said that son that is being spoken about there is not Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. We said that son yeah. being spoken about there is you and I. Remember that. It yes. cannot be Jesus Christ because Jesus has submitted fully to the father. Even to the death on the cross. To the point now where in Revelation, he tells us that all power in heaven and earth is given unto him and he sits in his father's throne. So the son, S-O-N, being spoken about there must be another son, you and I. 
Remember a few months ago, we studied the book of Daniel and we saw someone called the son of man coming with the clouds and he was brought to Jesus and was given a kingdom. We know it wasn't Jesus because the angel interpreted it to Daniel by telling him that son of man he saw were the saints of who? The most high. Do you remember this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. It's the same thing. You are the son, S-O-N, that all these things have been reserved and preserved for. But you must overcome the challenges that are in you. Amen. 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 You know that I am living my life right now running for public office. But that is not the challenge of my life. That is not the challenge of my life. The challenge of my life is in me. That, it doesn't matter whether I'm a soccer star, whether I'm a movie star, whether I'm a taxi driver, whether I'm black, white, red, yellow, brown, whether I'm rich, whether I'm poor, it's irrelevant. That is not the struggle. The struggle is to overcome death in me. And death there doesn't mean physical death, like you die one day. No, it means those things that separate me from God. I must overcome them. Amen? Amen. Maybe Amen. it is bitterness and envy. Maybe it is jealousy. Maybe it's an inferiority complex. Whatever it is, I must overcome that. And Paul just told me, and we read it together in Ephesians that the power that raised Christ from the dead is working in you and I so that you and I can know that the power is available to overcome. But the question is, where do you direct the power at? Do you direct the power at the things you want to achieve in the world? Or do you direct the power at the things inside of you that must be overcome? Because when those things are overcome, that is when death would be overcome. Death is simply the, the sinful nature that is in you and I. Remember, it says the wages of sin is what? Death. Death. Okay. So that, that nature, that thing inside of us, that thing inside of us is what we want to overcome. Amen? Amen. 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 We cannot do it of our own strength, but we help God by recognizing where the weaknesses are. That is why he said, if we confess our sins, confess your sins just simply means you acknowledge to yourself that you got a problem here. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now the Amen. power of God can come in there and take you out of that dimension. That is what it means to confess our sins. That is what it means to overcome. So this whole thing we've been studying is connected to the basic thing that Jesus has brought you and died for you for, okay? That is to transform you, to make you a new person so that at some point, the nature of Logan will go. The nature of a bear will go. And only the nature of Jesus will be in you and I. And anybody that sees us would have seen Jesus. And guess what Jesus says? If you've seen me, you've seen who? The Father. The, the Father. Father. Amen. So I really encourage us, please, this is one week you can't afford to just let this recording, you know, just be up there in cyber world. You've got to go play it again. Okay? You've got to go play this again and meditate upon it, knowing that what we're trying to overcome is inside of us and once it is overcome we become a pillar in his temple we have death subject to us and god becomes all in all of us nothing else but god in all of us Amen. praise god let me stop there and if there are questions related to it let's take them Didn't someone have a hand up? I don't see any hand. A while ago, he said they'd come back to it. 
That was about yes, it. yes, that's right, that's right. Abella, you had a question. What was it, please? Uh, no, it was just about um, uh, you know the the the, the verse saying um, you know the son is subject to God and and then that kind of like separates the son and the father almost. So I I just want a clarification on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. There is an eternal relationship. Okay. You and I refer to that thing as the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Yeah. It's a relationship that exists between the Father and the Son, S O N. It's a cosmic, eternal relationship that has no beginning and no mm -hmm. end. Amen. 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 The Father is God in a frequency in which there is no room for a slight imperfection. The Son is God in a dimension slightly reduced to permit a relationship between God and imperfection. So every time you study your Bible and see the Bible says, God said, I am sorry that I made man. The first thing you will notice is it would say, and the Lord came down. Amen. Amen. That coming down means God coming from the state of the father to the state of the son so he can relate with creation. Without the son, God has no relationship with creation. But for him to relate with creation, he must step down from the level he is as the father. And that is why Jesus says, no man can come to the father except by me. Okay. So Christ is the father stepped down. That is why Jesus says, the father is greater than I. You didn't... Yeah. Yeah, it's more than I. Yeah. Did, didn't Jesus say so? Yes. yes. Oh. Okay. So, I... so they said the Father is greater than I. He didn't say more than I. He said the Father is greater than I. Yes. Okay. So go ahead. You were going to say something, Dr. K. I was going to say in that case, when he says greater, it really, it really implies that it's more than just him. The father is more than just him. It's great. He's greater. But that wasn't my comment that I was going to make. The comment I was going to make was um, mom has said many times to me that um, we never know when somebody looks at us what they're seeing, that they may be seeing the, the Christ in us. They may be seeing Christ when they're looking at us. Yes. And so this kind of gives a scriptural basis for that. And we're progressing. So sometimes, remember, we go in, we come out. So yes. if we're in, when they see us, they see Christ. The day we go out, when they see us, they see our old person. And they're like, yes. I thought you were born again. Why are you behaving like this? Why are you talking like this? Okay, because we're not perfected yet. Yes. Uh, Brother Mike, one of the things that used to be incriminating to me as a child is the same thing I told Kay 
from the time she was small, it was told to me, my mother and my grandmother and my other spiritual mothers, they always reiterated that before we go wherever we're heading, off to school, off to play ball, whatever we're going to do, that if we're carrying the love of Christ in our hearts, we cannot be putting forth just ourselves. Sometimes during that time that we're going and moving, we may be the only Christ that another person that doesn't know sees. And as a youngster, that always pulled me back to my full height when I was stepping out, <laughs> you know, in the going out. Because as a child, everything you hear spiritually is literal. Uh -huh. you, you make it literal. And that's why it sticks with you when you're grown, when you begin to see the full realm of the statement. So I, I had forgotten that I even said that to her, but it came as a natural because it was what I heard as a child constantly. My mother wouldn't say, watch your attitude or something like that. She would say, remember, you may be the only God somebody sees today. Do you want them to be lost? Absolutely. Well, not lost. I mean, you are. <laughs> that, that could be taken out of context. But and I, what I mean is I agree with what your mom said. 100%. Well, you've got to tell children, you know, of all different ages, something for them to check themselves because they are so self-centered. That's why we call them children. That they don't know that they're going to become of an age into their personhood where this should get to be automatic, not have to be come through your thought processes from something that came to you at an early age. Well, and what I was, what I was referring to is there have been times when I have had to um, go and uh, defend somebody who was being mistreated. And when I got there and just stood there, that whoever had been guilty of the mistreatment took one look at me and the look they had on their face was if they had just seen something very frightening. And I yep, was like, what did they see? What did they see? And other times I've been in a store, like once I got off an elevator, just in Ikea, I love Ikea. And I, I got off the elevator and a little child looked up to me and said, are you a queen or something? <laughs> it was just so just crazy so and when you know I would tell mom some of these stories she said you don't know what the person saw when they looked at you you don't know what they saw what God allowed them to see <sighs> can, can I can I ask, ask it Billy if you can look at Psalm 110 verse yeah. 1 about okay. your question yeah Psalm 110, verse 1. Now, Dr. K, whilst he's doing that, can you look for the place where um, Jesus says that why, why did David call him Lord? Just, 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 look, just type that in. Why did David call him Lord? Okay. All right, uh, it says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Okay, very good. Now, Sister Liz, can you read that same scripture in your translation? Okay, and that's one, 106 what? No, Psalm 110, verse 1. Oh, one, oh, 110. No wonder it didn't make sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> going, it doesn't say that here. I, okay, here's, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Okay, there's some translations that say, and God said to God. 
sit at my right hand until I make you an enemy. Because in the in the in the original text, that is what it says. Okay. But people who couldn't understand that decided to just render it to be Lord. Okay. Now, Dr. K, have you found the scripture I was looking for where Jesus was speaking to some people and said that? Okay. Um, it says Matthew 22, verse 45, but I think you have to read verse um, the, the, uh, from verse 42 to verse 45. Okay, fine. Go ahead. Okay, Amen. we'll wait for everybody to find it. I'd like everybody to find it in their Bibles, please. Matthew Some, chapter, somehow another, that, yeah. What chapter? Matthew 22, verses 42 to 45. Amen. Amen. By the way, welcome Gwendolyn, Sister Gwendolyn. Book of the New Testament. Amen. 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 Saying, what think you of Christ? Whose son is he? They say unto him, the son of David. He said unto them, how then doth David in spirit call him saying, call him Lord saying, the Lord saith unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David then called him Lord, how is he his son? <laughs> Thank you. Now, Jesus was talking to those people about Psalm 110. That is to tell you, Abeli, that Christ and the Father have existed as a relationship right from the, for the Old Testament. Are you with me, everybody? Yes. 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 So you must pray to God for help. No man can give this to you. All I can do is take from one scripture to another, to another, to another, to another. But you've got to ask God because one, there is only one God. Mm. Amen? Amen. That's number one. And there is only one person. That is God. But whenever he relates with creation, the person that creation relates with is Christ. You remember when Abraham sat at the afternoon outside of his tent and he looked from afar and he saw three men coming towards him? Everybody remember? Yes. yes. And when the man came, the Bible says, Abraham fell to the ground and bowed to worship him, and it was God. And that God sat with Abraham. Abraham gave him something to drink, and God said within himself, should I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Then he told Abraham, I have come because I heard what is going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. Notice he's thinking. Did you notice that? He was what? Thinking. Every time he comes down, he begins to become procedural. He thinks. He says, I don't think this is a good idea I have. I don't think I'm going to do that. When he came down to talk to Moses, he told Moses, get away from me. I'm going to destroy all these people and start a new nation with you. And Moses says, God, don't do that. If you do that, the Egyptians and all the people say you weren't able to take the people in. And so you killed all of them. And he says, you know what, Moses, you got a point there. Do you guys not see what I'm seeing? 
Look at the in the book of Genesis from page one. It says God used to come down every evening. Come down. That's the word I want you to, the phrase I want you guys to stay with. Come down. You always hear the phrase, he came down. What do you mean come down? He's everywhere at the same time. It says that he came down to Adam and Eve and he couldn't see them. And he asked a question, where are you? In the state of the father, he doesn't have to ask that question. He knows exactly where you are anytime. That's why when Jesus was here, he prayed. He said, Father, crown me with the glory I had with you from before the foundation of the world. He has it now. But do you know if Jesus came into your room tonight and started talking to you, he would talk to you like a human being. When you tell him something, he'll say, mm, let me think about that. You know what? I think we should do that. I know how this sounds to you because it blows everything you have in religion, but I have the scriptures to back me up. That Ooh. is why we are the bride of Christ. Your wife actually has an opinion. She sometimes has a good idea. She sometimes says, maybe you shouldn't pay that guy back in the same coin he paid you. That's the relationship we have with Christ. That's why we're called the bride of Christ. You can't be somebody's bride if you have no brains. Okay? okay? So he comes down to our level. But he is the same God. That is why we read the other day, it says he is the everlasting father, the prince of peace, the mighty God. Do you remember? Yes. Good. So Christ is the everlasting father. He is the mighty God. He is the Prince of Peace. So it's not two different people. It's God manifest in different dimensions. In where he lives, you go, I'm not going to open to it because we've spent a while. But in Timothy, he says, God dwelleth in light unapproachable, whom no man has seen nor can see. But do you know that in the book of Exodus, it said that Moses and the 70 elders went to the mountain and they sat together with God and they ate and drank with God? Do you know the Bible says so? Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Think about it. Think about it. God came down and had a feast with them. And the Bible says, and they saw the Lord. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ebele, Ebele. Abeli, yeah. trust me, you are you are on the you are just beginning the ride of your life. See the way you're asking these questions? These are the questions to ask. But most importantly, ask God. Because only God can give it to you. Do you understand? Nobody yeah. can give it to you. And don't let anybody tell you there's a silly question in God. There's no silly question in God. None. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm going to stop here now. So I solicit your prayers. I solicit your support. Okay. I want to thank you for your time. For those of you who have been faithful, you know, uh, supporting this work, for being involved, sharing these videos. Okay. Don't be, don't, don't, don't get weary. Don't be weary. Don't get tired. Your strength is supposed to come brighter and brighter every day. Okay. Keep pressing on. Share these videos with your family and friends. Start watch parties on Facebook, go over this video so your friends and family can discuss it. Okay? And continue to write us. Write me through Facebook, write me through you know, the, the comment section here on YouTube. Okay? So I want to encourage you. Thank you so much for the way you've been supporting us. Thank you so much for all that you've been doing. We really appreciate it. Remember what I said if you want to continue listening to us, you can order, you can always go. Okay? To our website, you can see the online menu channels. That you can get us through, like I mentioned, um, Apple's iTunes, I met Apple iTunes, I mentioned um, Spotify, and I think Google. You can also, you know, there are other platforms also through which you can hear us through audio. Okay, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel and to, you know, 
hit the like button, hit the like button. So I can't say that enough. Every time you want to use videos through YouTube, hit the like button. Now, if you're watching through Facebook or you're watching through some other video like WhatsApp, it's not going to show here, so more you see a like. But if you're watching through YouTube, I want to encourage you, or Facebook, wherever it is, I want to encourage you, hit that like button. Okay, hit that like button. It matters to us. Okay, thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for everything that you've been doing, you know, by watching our videos. 